we every once in a while will catch sight of particularly the Percy Jackson TV subreddit, I believe it is, mm -hmm. where it is just the worst of the worst of Percy Jackson fans. And particularly when it comes to um, some like major character changes like Annabeth, um, Annabeth of course being black in the Percy Jackson TV series where she was a white blonde girl with blue eyes in the books. And the discourse among fans, like it's uh, in other sites besides Reddit, it's there hasn't been a lot of like, oh, Leah was not the right person for it, or I didn't love this part of her as much as anywhere on Reddit. <laughs> like, I don't know why. Um, it's just like they found their little place where they feel so okay to say some of the things that just kind of end up being stereotypes so yeah, that that can start off our rant the reason why these little bitches are like only on reddit is because anywhere else they would have to show their face and it's not acceptable behavior like because of rick riordan like that's not only because of him, but it is like a big deal. Like when you have something like this, the creator of the thing can like kind of set the tone. Mm -hmm. And there's been other things, other many other fandoms that I've been in, like Star Wars, for instance, that just ignored it for literally like 40 years and just acted like it wasn't there. And now it's a cesspool mess. And Harry Potter, obviously, with JK Rowling making it as worse as humanly possible. So when you're the creator, you can kind of set a tone of like what is acceptable in your own community and what isn't. And when you're the one who literally created the thing and you're out there telling these people to shit, like it means that they can't do that publicly because everyone is like very emboldened to tell them to stop being racist or whatever or whatever it is that they're saying. Because Rick Riordan put them in their place like as soon as he could, they have to be stuck on reddit but we still have to read what they say and i'm like most of the shit that they say to are about leah or they bring up dior sometimes they leave walker alone which is so funny <laughs> because of course they leave the one white actor alone um they still sometimes talk about him on and off but most of the time it's a lot more tame than all of the other actors and i'm like why does this subreddit exist where all they do is bully children that we're not in charge of being cast and this somebody else decided to do that and then sometimes they yell about rick riordan in a way that is extremely like divorced from reality um like most of the top posts on that reddit are people being like i hope rick riordan is happy that the show is so bad and rick riordan is a failure and Rick Riordan let us down and I know I said this to you but I genuinely think it is like fascinating absolutely fascinating how for since I was 12 years old which was in 1997 I've been on the internet and consistently through that time there's always been like a website for a particular fandom that is like outrageously negative like it kind of changes depending on every fandom but there's always a place for that and every time that place is convinced that the thing that they hate, everyone else feels the same way. And it's like, it's just you guys though. <laughs> like out, outside of this small Reddit page that not that many people post on, even if people look at it, because I think it's the biggest one like members wise still on Reddit. Um, the Percy Jackson show is the most popular show in Disney Plus this entire year. And like, they just announced something today that they're doing like a contest where you can win to um, go like on set during when they're filming season two for their D23 members. Like they're using it as a way to market Disney. <laughs> like it's a very popular, very well done, very like generally happy show that's been nominated for many awards so far. And we haven't even gotten to like the children's Emmy awards and things like that. They'll happen in a couple in probably like a month or so. And so it's just like, it's a weird thing for me to see like one place with so many people being so negative, acting like what they're saying is just like 
universally accepted when no one else agrees with them. And I'm like, why do you feel like you're so right? Like you all have to be white men <laughs> to feel this sure that you're that you're right. Yeah, well, and I told you, I started skimming through the books. Like that was, I felt like I had done enough looking at that Reddit and didn't want to do more for research for this. So I started skimming through the Lightning Thief and was like, okay, they're saying that Annabeth in the books was more like witty sarcastic. And I'm not saying that she's not funny, but I don't think that that girl was ever intentionally funny in the books. Like, I think that her humor comes off because she's like, yeah, you're an idiot, Percy. Like, <laughs> and it's very flat. Like, that's always how I've imagined Athena too, being a person who's in touch with the spirit of the mythology as well. Is just like, if she's humorous, it's like Daria humor, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. I don't I don't feel like I was missing this bubbly fun Annabeth because um another gripe I kept seeing over and over again was well like part of her motivation in the books was she was trying to get over this um dumb blonde image because she's a pretty blonde girl. Mm -hmm. Um I I don't see her playing into the like dumb blonde thing by being this silly sarcastic girl, you know? No, like that is objectively not Annabeth. Like whenever they talk about how Annabeth is like, like meaner or more aggressive or whatever in the show, it is 100% of the time a microaggression. Mm -hmm. And like, we'll go into what that really means, but people might be like frustrated by me saying it in like such like a definitive way but it just is because she's actually worse in the book. Like yep. she's, they make her much nicer in the show. Like I can go through like a list, like just off the top of my head, like in the third episode, when they have that whole really good scene where Grover basically gets Percy to admit that he knows that someone is supposed to betray him and then Annabeth talks about, you know, him and Annabeth talk out like their problems and stuff so they understand where each other is coming from. That never happens in the book. That never happens in the book. And also in that episode, they have a, a really, it's a short scene, but I love this scene where she goes into the gas station when the two of them are talking when they're on the bus. And she's like, she looks like unsure like she's trying to she wants to pick snacks that they'll like but you know this is annabeth who's like been at camp for the last six seven years she doesn't know like what kids would like for like fun road trip snacks but she they show her like sitting there looking like unsure like she wants them to like her and so she's trying to pick something that she thinks they would like because she wants that like that you don't see anything like that in the books because they're all from Percy's point of view. And that's that's not even counting like in the fourth episode, they change things with Echidna where she is like, this is my responsibility. So I should be the one to fight her and probably die because we are stuck here because of my stupid mother. And Percy has to trick her, but he has to trick her because she is willing to sacrifice herself to save them because she feels like my plan didn't work. And so I have to be, I should be the one to do this. But then, of course, the fifth episode, her huge speech, like her huge, I don't know how you can say that Annabeth in the show is too mean or, or whatever, when that speech to Hephaestus exists, like that speech is the most heartfelt speech you can ever possibly say about someone. That never happens in, in the books. The tunnel of love is completely different. It takes way longer in the books for her to outwardly say that she likes Percy. Mm -hmm. Like, he's honestly not sure. Yeah. And so, like, right before they go into, like, the underworld, he's not sure in the books because, like, I, w I was very traumatized when I read these books. I still am, but you know what I mean. Like, un, un like, helped um, when I read all of these books. And I did not fully trust Annabeth until I got to, like, the last book and I found out that she wasn't the, the mole. 
And part of that is because she is so antagonistic towards him in the first book that that made me immediately not trust her for the longest time. Because yeah. that's how I am. I have so many trust issues. But like, I wouldn't have had such a hard time with her if they were as nice as people on that Reddit describe her as being when that is not who she is. Yeah, like maybe once they warmed up to each other, she was that nice. Mm -hmm. But um, on on the show, I I can't remember if he says it on the in the books for sure, but he tells Annabeth, the reason I chose you is because I knew you'd have no problem sacrificing me if our mission needed it. And probably doesn't say it in the books because it's literally right before he sits in the chair. And you get the sense from Annabeth in the books that that's true. You don't get the sense from Annabeth in the show, particularly once they're at that point. I mean, even before she goes into her huge speech, you see like Leah does a great job of like, well, I'm gonna look around at this chair and try to figure out how to fix it myself. Even though in mythology, I know no one is, was able to get anybody out except for the creator of the chair. So like, yeah. <laughs> And like the that's like one of the like we talked about this when we talked about season one, but it's very sweet to see that Percy picks Annabeth because Luke talks about how smart she is and how cunning she is and how she's like the best planner for everyone wants to be on her team for capture the flag because she always wins because she's the most competitive person at camp and nobody like ever questions that statement. Everyone knows that that's true. And so he wants her to go on the quest, and she, even though she's, like, surprised in both versions, like the book and the show, she's surprised that he picks her because she's just been stalking him. <laughs> and that they don't, like, really have any sort of an actual relation. They don't know each other at all. The fun of the show is that as the audience, you can see that Annabeth starts getting to know Percy after they have that moment in the third episode where they, like, finally talk to each other without just trauma responsing on each other and mm -hmm. they and you see like her start to like actually like him and get along with him and be like oh this kid is actually one of the best people that i've ever met and it's like oh shit <laughs> like um i think he's supposed to die one day this is gonna what i'm not he's not supposed to be a nice person he's supposed to just die one day and and so like we as the audience we can see her like liking him more and more and more as you would when you get to know a friend and realize that they're a really great person like percy doesn't pick up on that fact because of his lack of self-esteem which makes sense why he doesn't but we get that and so like that's a very obvious storyline that is happening throughout like the that season like by to compare it to like the books i remember i do remember when i read the books that when you get to the underworld and um and percy the whole book is worrying that he'll have to choose between like he'll have to like betray his new friends to save his mom and he doesn't he obviously doesn't want to have to do that but he doesn't know what else to do and then in the book version when they get to the underworld they are the ones that are like we're not leaving here without your mom yeah he's like oh but maybe i'll leave myself behind and they're like absolutely not this is not i don't care what we're gonna do and even like Annabeth is like, no, I refuse to leave here without your mother. We're not leaving here without her. I don't care like what they say. And it's like this big moment for him to realize like, oh my God, I've been so worried about these people turning against me and they're not going to do that. And like to compare that moment to like the show, when Annabeth, when they're going, after they deal with like Krusty and stuff, when they're going down to like the underworld, she just says offhand, like, let's go help, like, let's go save your mom. And it's not a huge moment because by the time they get to this point, you know, for many episodes that she is, she will like pick up Sally and like take her back to the surface herself because you've seen how her and Percy are friends already by this point. And those like differences in storylines wouldn't be that stark if Annabeth on the TV show was like a malignant like bitch. <laughs> People either describe her like with microaggressions like saying that she's being aggressive when she's not, or they act like her entire personality was taken away because very specific moments in the books didn't happen, even though they just replaced those moments with different scenes. So the same things and the same personality traits are still there, 
Mm -hmm. They're just in a different place than maybe you expected them. And because you're so, this is, I, I'll stop with like that whole rant, but like people, when they want something adapted from a, anything from like a book or whatever to a movie or TV show or whatever, when you get so laser focused on like wanting to see specific scenes happen exactly like they are in the book, you are the ones that are like missing the actual story because you're so focused on these very specific things that you want to see that you that you are confused when you're watching the show because you're thinking too much about what they're doing instead of just watching it and enjoying what you're seeing and letting them tell their own story. And mm -hmm. so I feel like Annabeth, because of the reaction that Leah got when she was originally announced as casted was so aggressive. Um, she's almost like the scapegoat for the show where if people want to find something wrong with the show because they're just mad that it's not a book, they just start talking about her and try to find a reason not to like it because of her. I've seen a lot of people use the justification, well, she's one of the big three cast members. We would be more mad about Clarice, let's say, and Dior if she had a bigger part in this one. Well, it's like, just wait, because we know you're coming next season. We know next season you're going to be mad about something that Dior does. Yeah, and they'll probably add in more scenes with Clarice. Like, it would be a very good, honestly, I never actually said this out loud when we were doing our episodes about Sea of Monsters, but it would be a smart idea for them to add in, use that as a way to add in scenes with Grover that they could show scenes of her getting to Polythemus's island when Grover is there and have scenes with them so that we get more of Aryan before the other two show up and all that. Um, so I'm sure that there is going to be things like that. And like Clarice has huge storylines in, not as big in the, well, it could be a bigger storyline in the fourth book and it, definitely in the fifth book. The third oh. one is the only one where she doesn't have like a huge thing going on um but that's just because of the general storyline of that of that quest is very different years of being online i see like essentially racist people they they follow very similar patterns mm -hmm. and one of the patterns they tend to do is be like oh but i'm not racist because this other cast member that is also not a white person i think is fine and it's like, that is because you're making like qualifications or like you're, I can't remember the right word for it, but you're almost like justifying, you're like justifying things of like, oh, well, I can be horrible to this girl who plays Annabeth, who is a literal child, who hasn't done anything wrong, who was 13 when people were harassing her and calling her all sorts of names when she was on set like training to be Annabeth with the rest of the cast and was having that shit blowing up on her Instagram. Um, because I'm being nice to like the other actors that aren't as big of a part, but it's like, it's just because they, honestly, most of it is because they're not playing somebody that is seen as the main person's love interest. Mm -hmm. That's literally what it, usually what it is, is from watching that through the years, nothing makes racist people more angry than black people, particularly being seen as, as like attractive and being seen as desirable and in any sort of way. And the fact that Annabeth is not only the biggest female character in Percy Jackson, everybody loves her. And she's also in a long-term like slow burn romance sort of thing with the main star and is also his best friend and somebody that he cannot imagine living without. And so she's going to take the brunt of all that because she is that important and it makes them so angry to see somebody who is so important to this story be played by somebody who is a dark skinned black person. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. And it's annoying as how, how predictable it is because it's the same stuff that people said to John Boyega when he was cast as Finn. Like textbook the same thing that they would get so mad about the idea of him and Ray being like paired up romantically in the same exact sort of way. I know I sent you something today where someone was saying, watch when they get to the third season, if Rachel's casted as a white girl, everybody is going to be like, well, how about in this version, Percy ends up with Rachel. This is why my like hope more than any hope for like the diversity of the cast is that they cast somebody who is not white for Rachel. 
Um, because anyone can have red hair and yeah. so anyone can have, there's like, there's a lots of, of like people that I've seen on the internet and in real life who are not white and have red hair. And so anyone can have that. And so, um, you can cast any other, literally any other race, any other race, but a white person, just, just to like mess that up because I don't want that to happen either because people would default into that without even knowing what they were doing in the US at least people know that like certain things are bad like nobody wants to be seen as racist being seen as racist is a bad thing but a lot of times people don't really know what that really means like what being racist actually is and so they'll act racist and they'll say I'm not racist because of blank blah 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 and it's like you don't even understand like what you're doing and why what you're saying is 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 that because you don't actually know you just don't want to be called that word because you know that it's bad and it's not like societally unex it's one of the most unacceptable things in society that you can do in the united states like as soon as somebody says that to you people are immediately on the defense and they're like no i'm not like i didn't do that i don't think that way and but they don't a lot of times they don't take the time to actually learn they don't actually know what that even is and so I'm sure that a lot of people on that Reddit page don't think that they're racist towards Leah, but they are extremely racist towards her. <laughs> I mean, we saw in Sea of Monsters, which we just reread, that Annabeth can be some of the things that they were saying Leah's version is too much of, like aggressive, rude, bratty. She can be those things. Like Annabeth can be those things, but it is not because Leah is portraying somebody who isn't Annabeth. Like these kids have all read the books and these kids all read the books before they auditioned for it, before they even knew this TV show was coming out. Yeah. Um, yeah and it's just, it's, it's hard to um, like pinpoint anyone's criticisms of, of those things, like on particular scenes. I've never seen someone say like, if you go to this scene in the show, this is where she is so different and so aggressive and i don't like it like no that's never it's never that much i guess we could say what a microaggression is it's essentially when especially with primarily it happens with black people that when you say something that is that is rooted in like a racist idea in society and you're mm -hmm. and you're saying it to them like to their face and when they respond to it and they say like that's that's not accurate that's a like you're being you're saying something that's like racist or whatever then you get upset and you say that they're attacking you and like a good example of that would be like how people comment on black people's hair all the time or yeah. white people get on the internet on here and try to do like braids that destroy our hair that make your hair fall out because our hair is not meant to do those sort of braids and we have no business doing what the hell are we doing doing those sort of braids anyway even if we wanted to it's like our hair literally falls off of our head if we do it and yeah. so it's that sort of a thing and so when you see people saying like oh annabeth is more aggressive and she's more angry and and leah isn't a good actress and things like that during like the first season of Percy Jackson and then you watch the show and you're like Annabeth is actually a lot nicer than she is in the books I can I listed them off a bunch of things already but if I really tried I could think of more things of to compare about how she's actually a lot nicer in the show because nobody wants to watch a tv show where the main character gets like like passive aggressive comments made towards him by one of the other main stars for like three fourths of the book before he realizes that she actually like now likes him as a person but it just took him this long to figure it out nobody wants to watch that process and so they made that happen much faster on the show but like so if you if you re read the books and saw that and then watched the show and saw the scenes be different but you're still saying that there's something mean and aggressive about her it's because Black people don't fit into the white supremacy beauty standard. And so because of that, they're seen as masculine, especially black women or girls. And so the way that that manifests with people is by white people saying that they look angry 
and they look defiant or they look upset or mad or rude or whatever when they're not that's just their face Mm -hmm. it's just their face and their face doesn't fit into white eurocentric beauty standards because they're not white and they're not from europe and so that happens so much with pr primarily most of the violence that happens to black people is because of that and so like when you have people like this on that reddit page saying that annabeth is mean and angry in the show where in the show she does an entire speech saying how wonderful of a person Percy is and literally begs Hephaestus to save, to save him, literally says like, I am not leaving this place. I don't care if my mom gets mad at me. Like this girl was fighting with him two episodes ago over him shit talking her mother. And now two episodes later, she's like, I don't care if my mom never speaks to me again, basically. I'm not leaving this room until you save my friend because he is a wonderful person who is better than all of you. And mm -hmm. I don't wanna be like, do this anymore. Like she literally like rethinks her entire life after knowing him for four days, <laughs> basically on this quest. Like if you can watch that and be like, Annabeth is meaner on the show there's something else that's like influencing your thought process it would be really nice for you to figure it out so that you would stop harassing somebody who was 13 years old when she filmed this show to move on to the criticism of like annabeth lost emotional depth because they seem to be moving away from an annabeth and luke pseudo romance um <laughs> That one, I know you're going to have a lot to say about it, but, it, but like, I, I do want to remind people that when the books came out, um, let's see, is this the first edition? I don't know if this is the first edition, but it's pretty. 2005 was when The Lightning Thief came out. Yeah, and in 2005, we had, like, Hilary Duff dating one of the good Charlotte twins that it was, was like a 25 or something, right? <laughs> yeah, and she was, like, 17, and we had... Um, that was the era where Demi's whole like 17, 25 thing, like, or whatever happened, you know, like it was the era where the, it kind of was, I don't want to say socially acceptable, but people were kind of, you know, like turning a blind eye to these age gap romances in a way that we don't anymore. And mm -hmm. So that is an element that can be said about the Luke and Annabeth potential romantic thing that was happening, mm -hmm. um, is that if it was all inspired by that time, that is why, you know, um, it's, it's how YA culture was back then, because we didn't have YA culture. It was like a, a brand new, brand new blossoming kind of experience to have teen movies, teen TV shows, teen books in that way. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah, a lot of the romances were very unhealthy in them. And so ironic that people are trying to say that the TV show took away all of these character traits for Annabeth and left her with like just being like a cool, sassy which feels microaggressive too, to just use the word sassy, but if they use that word anyway, but like that, like the cool Banff girl that like doesn't need anyone and blah, blah, blah. I feel, I find it so ironic that people just say that they took away all of her character traits when the one that you want to bring back is her having like a weird crush on the guy who ends up being the villain. That's a basically a serial killer. And so I'm like, out of everything about Annabeth, you want to bring back her having an inappropriate crush on an older boy? That is so stereotypical and ridiculous. Like, Annabeth has so many other things about her that is amazing and wonderful and beautiful as a character, except for the fact that she, for like a half hour of the first book, might have a crush on like the guy that she's known since she was seven years old. Like I'm not like I'm the worst person to establish if there's a crush in anything, but I didn't feel like that's what was happening there, at least in a serious way. But who knows? Maybe I was supposed to pick that up and I'm just being super asexual <laughs> and and like not noticing. But I just think it's so ironic that they're like, you took all all these important parts of her personality and you think the important important part is 
her having a weird crush on a 19 year old guy when she's 12 like that's the thing that you think is so integral to annabeth as a character is that like there's so many other things about her that you could focus on but that's the thing that you think is missing is weird love interest nonsense that doesn't actually mean anything you're trying to defend her character by basically knocking her character down at the same time by saying that the only thing interesting about her is an idea of like romance with another boy like no no <laughs> it's so weird to think that we were all just so okay with that that people see that as such an integral part like why can't it be a found family thing that has just as much weight to it if not more especially to these gen alpha kids because I don't know about anybody else's little Gen Alpha kid, but mine is 11 and hasn't had a single crush yet. These are a little bit different than, like, my generation who was graduating high school around the time that these books started coming out. Yeah, and also, like, these kids have now grown up the last few years with people openly discussing, like, grooming and mm -hmm. inappropriate age gaps like there's an audio going around on TikTok right now of like literal kids at like a middle school dance aggressively singing along to the Kendrick Lamar lyrics where he's calling Drake a pedophile and now kids that age when they think that somebody is being creepy they start quoting that song in like comment sections of TikToks that's like the song they're going to quote now to basically say that somebody is being creepy and like when you there are a couple of interviews with Walker and Leah where they literally comment on it about how they would be on set together and they would be looking at how old Charlie is and how young Leah is and they were like this is really fucking weird <laughs> they wouldn't say fuck but at least not in interviews they would but they would all they would say how weird that was and how they didn't understand how they could possibly do scenes like that or like how that they were all confused about this storyline that they did in the books of what it meant like if it was romantic or not or whatever because they were just like this is so weird like that one interview that walker and leah did together like leah literally is like how old are you <laughs> when they like bring up him saying like did you ever really love me in the last book she is immediately like how old are you again aren't you a little bit too old for me and so like if the actors who play their characters who are the age of the kids that would be watching this sort of show like the general audience that they would be going for are saying things like that then the show is going to know that obviously they're not brain dead <laughs> like they can see how the way that people talk about these sort of relationships has changed a lot in the since 2005 like people know way more about grooming and stuff like i, I can remember when i was in high school and college talking about inappropriate situations like that with people and people thought that I was being crazy and would tell me that I was being dramatic or that I was wrong or I was like being too serious or whatever but I know that if I said the same stuff now the people would would believe me <laughs> and I and I wouldn't have to be the one to point it out most of the time anymore um but at, back then people just didn't know and it's a good thing that they do now and it's yeah so weird that people want to see that like they want to see Annabeth have to experience that on screen when it was never like explicitly stated in the book so they don't and there is nothing in the books like uh storyline wise where it's like integral to the plot or something and so there really is no reason to go there mm -hmm. so why would they <laughs> familial love is enough like and that's what i think is going to get proven with this storyline especially if what i hope they're doing with allison is to get rid of the luke and annabeth romance kind of thing by giving luke his own i don't know his own demigod girlfriend or whatever it may be um you know because i i love that it's something that you've said since the beginning which is they are showing the actual age group that these kids are supposed to be in, which doesn't hit as hard in the movies because Logan Lerman was like already 18 or something probably when <laughs> the first film was done. So, you know, it doesn't hit that a child had to go all the way across the United States, New York to LA and back to New York. Like, that's crazy. I've never been to New York and I live in, um, in California. 
I can't fathom going to New York by myself as a 30, almost 34 year old woman, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, and most of the time when they did that, they didn't have any like food or money. Yeah. Or they were like hitchhiking for half of the trip. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, it's one of those things of like showing Luke being inappropriate sets up him being the villain. Um, <laughs> but you don't, he can be inappropriate with other people without it having to be Annabeth. Like, for instance, like Selena, the person that he is that it's actually important to the plot to have him be inappropriate with Selena because he is literally grooming her to be his mole. And so like, yes, that actually makes sense that 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 would be something that they would show because it is a, a huge storyline that she that he is forcing her to do that and is manipulating her into doing that when she doesn't want to and, and trapping her in this horrible situation where she doesn't no, she feels like she can't tell Camp because Camp would then obviously get upset with her for doing that. But then at the same time, she's scared that if she doesn't do it, that he's going to kill more people, more kids at camp if she doesn't do it. And she's a little like she's 13 years old when he starts doing that with her in the in the second book. We don't like we're not aware of it until later books that something like that is going on. We're, we're aware of it in the second book. We just don't know that it's her. And so if they wanted to show somebody going through that, she would be the character that they would show at some point and show him being wildly inappropriate with a young person that he shouldn't be doing that with. But it doesn't have to be Annabeth. 